Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for our unit on motion, today's lesson will be about velocity. In the previous lesson, we have learned how to define speed and how to find the speed of an object. Uh, today's lesson will be all about the difference between speed and velocity. So, what is the difference between speed and velocity? To understand, let's look at these two sentences, which apparently are telling exactly the same thing. So, let's read them. The first one, Felix is moving at 340 meters per second. By the way, we're talking here about the speed of sound. And this name was not chosen randomly, but you'll see it's referred to someone who actually moved at the speed of sound. So let's look at the second sentence. Felix is falling at 340 meters per second. And before we go forward, I really encourage you to pause this video for a second and think, okay, what is the big difference between these two sentences? So probably most of you have realized that the only difference is in here between moving and falling. I mean, they're both referring to a movement but falling is a very specific movement, is a movement downwards. So what is the big difference is that the second statement is talking also about direction. And here lies the whole difference between speed and velocity. Because in the first statement we have speed and in the second one we have velocity. So at this point we're ready to give a definition of velocity and normally we will say that velocity is speed with direction so what we have here we have that velocity gives the same information that speed gives so a value and its unit but gives also another piece of information which is the direction in which your object is moving and to understand this uh, even better we'll see another example let's look at this sentence here it says I'm driving at 80 kilometers per hour so what kind of information I'm giving here I'm giving a number and a unit that's it so this is the speed at which I'm driving but in the second sentence I'm saying I'm sailing at 5 kilometers per hour northeast and E. So not only I'm telling you how fast I'm, I'm going, I'm also telling you in which direction. So this second sentence refers to my velocity. Now, a quantity like velocity, which has a value which no one will call magnitude, as well as direction, is part of a bigger family of physical quantities that we call vectors. So velocity is our first example of a vector, a physical quantity represented by a magnitude as well as a direction. And for this reason, uh, when we want to represent graphically in a diagram, in a drawing, we want to represent the velocity of an object, we will use an arrow like this one. And again, why an arrow? Because the point of the arrow, the head of the arrow, will give us the direction. Not only the length of the arrow can give us an idea of how fast this velocity is. So a longer arrow means a faster speed, a velocity, sorry, a shorter arrow will mean a smaller velocity. And this will be important especially when in a diagram we're going to have more than one arrow so we want to compare the values of these velocities and this will be super important in a few weeks when we start to talk about forces because forces are vectors forces will re be represented in a diagram with arrows and especially when we're going to see what we call a force diagram so how about a quantity like speed that is not represented by an arrow, does not have a direction. Okay, these physical quantities, which speed is one of the examples, but it's not the only example, are called scalars. So a scalar is a quantity that is represented by a simple numerical value. I will add also by its unit. So to wrap everything up, we know that velocity is a vector and we're going to see more examples of vectors and speed 
is a scholar. And this guy over here, well, he will be important for our story later on. But just to tell you, his name is Vector. So, for now, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.